Hello and welcome to the Orchid Hut. My name is Dana and I have not done one of these videos in the longest time. But this is a one thing you need to know video today. And it might be a little bit of a two things you need to know because we're going to be talking about this Phalaenopsis orchid, uh, which is a little bit different. You can tell that it actually has two crowns. And I want to give you a little bit of a background on this orchid, what happened, and how it ended up having two growth points, what it's called, and what you need to do when you repot a Phalaenopsis orchid like this. So this is one thing you need to know about a basal growth on a Phalaenopsis orchid and how you should handle it when you're doing a repot. Okay, so this orchid was actually a gift from my husband probably about two years ago. And as many of these orchids that come potted in these flimsy plastic pots with sphagnum moss, as many of them do, um, the original growth, which was this one right here, ends up having something called crown rot. And you can identify crown rot on a Phalaenopsis orchid because something about the top growth or something on the actual stem of the Phalaenopsis will begin to turn brown and it looks like rot and it actually is and if not treated early and quickly and completely um, it will kill your Phalaenopsis orchid. So what happened with this one is that it began to have a new leaf growth right at the top of the crown here and I noticed that that new little leaf just was turning black within, you know, a matter of a day or two. So I took the little tiny black leaf and I pulled it out and then I immediately began treating the top of this plant with 3% um, hydrogen peroxide and I did that for several days. And the crown rot did not progress down into the stem of the plant. So it managed to survive that. But unfortunately, what happens then is that the growth point from the crown of the Phalaenopsis is pretty much destroyed at that point. So the orchid has to figure out a way to save itself. And sometimes a Phalaenopsis orchid will put up a spike from the center of a plant like this, a flower spike, and it's called a terminal spike, and that is its way to hopefully be able to reproduce at some point in the future if the bloom gets pollinated. So that's one way the orchid can decide to save itself. This orchid did not do that. What it did instead is it produced a basal growth from uh, the very bottom of the stem of the original crown. So now it kind of looks like a two-headed Phalaenopsis. But um, oftentimes, these second growths are referred to as cakeys, that's incorrect, or sometimes they're referred to as basal cakeys, that's also incorrect. The proper term for this growth from the side like this is a basal growth. And the reason is because a cakey develops a root system of its own. A cakey comes from the flower stem. A growth like this does not have a root system of its own. It depends on the root system of the original Phalaenopsis. Okay, so is there anything wrong with this plant? Well, not really. This will grow on. This particular um, growth has the ability to make more leaves from the crown of the plant. This will eventually flower and bloom, I hope. Now, this part of the plant may put a terminal spike, may send up, you know, a regular bloom spike, but as all Phalaenopsis leaves do eventually, these leaves will die once they become old enough, and by that point, this growth will have matured and it will carry on with the root system of the plant that exists right now. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the repot here. Now, in the background, you are going to hear my cat Tang. He is he is meowing. We were at the vet with him this morning. He got two shots, not for anything too serious, we hope, but he did get two shots. And if you happen to have cats, you know that when you get them back home, their behavior is a little bit off for a while. So he is uh, right now roaming the house, looking around a bit and meowing, probably because he hears my voice talking and uh, he's just gonna be a uh, part of the audio <laughs> of this orchid video. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just cut this pot off now. You're probably thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, if you're a serious orchid grower, how could you possibly leave this orchid in this horrible potted state for so long? Well, it was having issues, so I didn't really want to stress it out any more than it was already going through. And uh, then once I saw that basal growth, I thought, oh, well, let that go for a little while. And so, you know, one month became two months, and two months became six months, and six months became a year. And uh, now I think it is stable enough without any other issues going on to tackle this repot. And um, hopefully what we're going to be able to see once we get the pot off and we get this really old sphagnum moss off is we will be able to see that this uh, orchid really just has one root system even though it has two points of growth or rather two mature orchids at the top of the pot. So as I've been taking care of this one uh, it, you know, has required a little bit different monitoring. I don't have any other of my Phalaenopsis orchids planted in pure sphagnum moss. I find it difficult to maintain this way because you can't really tell how wet the inside of the pot is. You know, in this particular setup, I was able to see that the roots were greening up after I watered it and um, I was trying to let it for the most part dry out uh, before giving it water again because you know you don't want it sitting around being soggy. So um, you know it was taking a little bit of special care, uh, care on the watering front but I did want this one to be successful because it was a gift and you kind of get attached to gifts. It was so long ago that it bloomed that um, right now I'm not even having a good memory of what the bloom looks like unless I were to go back and like look through my photos because I probably did take a picture of it. It was purchased in bloom of course and uh, right after the bloom faded and was cut away. That was when the crown rot really became noticeable because it started that new leaf growth at the top of the plant and probably the beginnings of the crown rot were already lurking, you know, at the top of the plant because water had probably gotten down in there and bacteria and whatnot started that situation when the orchid was either with the original grower or in transport or when it was you know hanging around in the store that had it before it was sold and then it just sort of um, skyrockets you know once it really takes hold it just can progress really quickly and I, I have found that the only chance of saving uh, an orchid like that is to catch it really, really early. Um, once it gets established, it's hard to save. And what, what I always find amazing with the Phalaenopsis like this is this pile of sphagnum that just, you know, it, it just it's almost unbelievable how much sphagnum is really packed around the roots. 
Amazingly, this one has a decent root system given that it was in this setup for quite a while. Um, and there's really, you know, not a lot of, of dead to cut away here. Okay, so I am going to try to get this up close on the camera so that you can see how this basal growth develops. Okay, so remember this with the two leaves, this was the original plant. Okay, now the basal growth came from pretty far down on the stem of the original plant. So it sprouted from down here, which is pretty far down on the stem of the original plant. And you can see that it shares the root system of the original plant. The roots that are on this side right here belonged to the original growth and this new growth is just piggybacking on top of the root system of the original plant. So when you repot this, you never ever ever want to try to separate this. You don't want to try to cut this one growth away from the other and have two orchids because the root system is only connected to this part. It's not really connected to this new growth. But you can see what this basal growth is trying to do. It has an air root right here, so it's attempting to start a root system of its own because it knows eventually that what it's depending on will probably die away. And right down here, it also started can get that leaf out of the way. Right down here it also started a new root of its own to try to establish itself as you know a plant that can uh, live without the uh, original crown that it came from. Okay so let's have a look here and we are going to cut away some of the dead. These uh, clippers have been sterilized with the flame. This is the old bloom spike right here, a kind of a woody stem. I'm going to cut that back just a little bit more. This root, um, I think I'm going to sacrifice this one. So this root right here, you can tell is really um, a sort of not healthy next to the stem of the plant. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that away. Some of the root at the bottom appears to still be green and living, but um, but this part right here was not healthy. Okay, and I don't really think that I'm going to mess with it much more than this. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a quick little break, clean up this mess, off camera, I am going to spray this root system with 3% hydrogen peroxide because this is the first time I am repotting it, and I will be right back with the repot. Okay, so we are back with the orchid after the 3% hydrogen peroxide spray. Uh, this is kind of an opportunity to have one more look at the root system and make sure you don't see anything that looks dead that needs to be trimmed away. And I think we're pretty much ready to go. So what I'm going to be using today is my pre-made orchid mix from Marie Pop Me. It is the Phalaenopsis Monterey Dark, I believe. So this is what I typically pot all of my Phalaenopsis orchids in. However, I am going to be adding some extra chopped sphagnum moss to the mix mostly because that's what this orchid is coming out of and a straight bark mix might be a little bit more difficult for it to tolerate and adjust to. So I'm going to put a little bit of the mix in the bottom. I'm not quite sure what this is, but I'll get rid of that. And we will check for height here. 
And this is also um, a great opportunity to, you know, pay attention to a good pot size for this orchid. Um, ideally, I don't want to have to repot it for at least two years. So the root system is snug in this pot without being too tight and without being too loose. And um, Phalaenopsis orchids typically do not like to be over potted. So this is a good fit, um, except for the fact that it might be a little bit high. So I'm gonna take some of the bark out of the bottom and that should work out a bit better, okay. So I'm going to put some of the bark in, I will put some of the sphagnum in, and I hope this one blooms for me again, and um, as soon as it sends a bloom spike, I will probably include it like in a orchid medley chit chat video so that you guys can see um, where that bloom spike is coming from you know is it coming from the original crown of the phalaenopsis or is it coming from the basal growth okay Sometimes smaller pots are more of a challenge to work with than the larger pots because you're trying to get these bark pieces in all of the air gaps. There goes Tang again. Tang, do you hear me talking in here making this video? I'm going to make sure and take a picture of him and uh, put it at the very end of this video so that his handsome face can be on YouTube just like his meowing. Cats are just so super sensitive about going to the vet. They do not like strange places. They do not like being handled by strange people. It just was not on his agenda today to be shoved into a carrier and um, taken to some place he didn't want to go. It completely interrupted his nap schedule. Okay. All right, so this is looking pretty good. And let's uh, go around the pot here, make sure we don't have any air, large air gaps. So this is actually good. There's a part of the root system here that I can clearly see through the pot. And it's green right now because of the hydrogen peroxide spray, but when I water this orchid, I will be able to tell whether or not that root system is thriving or not. And otherwise, a little bit of a gap right there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, on the top of the pot, it looks like this root from the basal growth is determined to be an air root, so I'm just gonna let that be. It's growing straight up, and I, at this point, I'm not exactly sure that I know of any way to encourage that to go down into the media. It will uh, kind of have to decide what it wants to do. Okay, so that concludes this one thing you need to know video about a basal growth on a Phalaenopsis orchid and what in the world to do with it when you repot. Um, I thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new or just like hearing my cat meow, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button will be coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And don't forget the notifications bell so that you know when I've posted something new. Talk to you all next time.